Hello and welcome to this next uh, Blender tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to um, use a 2D uh, blueprint uh, to model out um, a TARDIS um, or a police box if that's what you're wanting to make. So I've done a search for some um, images. Uh, I've gone for uh, either free to use or uh, Creative Commons, something that's not you know licensed. So let's uh, go to general now. Uh, so I want to set up those images in my viewport because I want the, you know to be able to see them in the viewport so that I can work with them. Um, I want to view it in the front on mode. <coughs> Excuse me. So I press one to get into the front view and then shift A and then down to image. And I'm going to use a background image for this one. Uh, and this is going to be my actual 2D blueprint. So I'll go to where I've got those stored and I'll pick out my blueprint. I believe it's that one. There we go. So I want to be able to see through my box so I'm going to turn on the X-ray mode and I'm just going to reposition this so it's a bit more central. Uh, so first of all G and Z I'm going to move that up till the base is on that red line and then it's not very central. Uh, this you know, image is offset a little bit. Uh, so G and X to restrain it. And I'm just going to move it so that center point is in the middle of my model. Whoops, that's not quite right. G, X. There we go, somewhere around there. Okay, so I also want a, um, you know, a more perspective picture of this, um, this model. <clears throat> so that um, I can use it to help interpret interpret the lines. <clears throat> Some of these lines don't really tell me an awful lot in terms of their depth and you know how they fit together and such like. So I find having a you know more of a perspective uh, image is helpful. So we'll add one of those. So Shift A, and then I'm going to go to my reference image. And go find my folder again oops and pick my reference and now I'll just press G and move that off to one side so now I can see kind of the depth of uh, various bits uh, I know that is here in theory uh, but I like to see it in 3d I like to see how things generally fit together okay so that's the basic setup um, if I go back into a perspective mode by pressing 2, you'll see that my reference image is still visible. Um, but if I press 1, my actual 2D image, my uh, background image is only visible in this viewport, in the, the viewport that I had it set in. And that's perfect for me because I'm going to do most of my actual proportional modelling uh, in this front on viewport. OK, so when we come back for the next bit, what we'll do is we'll start to block out uh, our shape and then we'll go and put more detail in. Uh, so I shall talk to you. OK, so let's uh, do this base first and we're going to do that off this cube. So I'll just press one and then make sure I've got the cube selected and press tab to go into edit mode. So the first thing I will do is just scale it down so it's the width of this um, this piece at the bottom. Uh, so if I press G, whoops, not G. <laughs> if I press S and scale that down until it fits the width. There we go. And now we want to do the height. So it's uh, S and Z. And I'll just squeeze that down until it's about right. Uh, so proportionately that's not going to work uh, so I'm just going to get it so that the top fits and then I'll press G and Z just move that up a little bit and I'll select the bottom polygon with my uh, left mouse drag and I'll just move that up with G and Z onto the bottom and if I go back to perspective mode with the 2 key that's what we get so it's not bad. Um, I'll bevel it off and do other things later, but I'm just blocking in the shapes at the moment. 
So the next shape I want is uh, kind of the posts on the side. See these posts, it's got like four corner posts. Um, so we'll pop those in. So let's press one to go into our front view. And then with all of this selected, um, you can select a, a piece of it and then press uh, Control and L. Oops, it's not selecting. Come on, jump. That's because I'm not in poly mode. There we go. So Control L will make sure I've got everything. And then Shift D to duplicate it. And now I can move it around. Uh, but I just want to press uh, the right mouse button and now scale this down. Uh, so let's press the S key and I'll scale that a little bit further down there. Uh, I want to scale it in Z a little bit so let's press S and Z and move that up and now press G and move it into position. And now I can refine that shape a little bit, make it the right size, just line it up. Uh, so I'll press G initially and then S to scale it up a little bit, just scaling it between the lines a little. Uh, this bottom piece I'm not too worried about, um, it's going to be poking in, that's okay, it gives me a bit of leeway. Right, so if I um, middle mouse, not middle mouse, left mouse drag box over that top piece and then zoom out with my mouse wheel, uh, I can move, so G and then Z to constrict it to the vertical axis. I move that right up to the top just before it tapers off and has a little piece coming out there. Okay, so that will have got it kind of more or less in the right position, but only in one axis. So I just need to pop into my uh, perspective view and I'll press Control and L to select the rest of that geometry. And I'm going to top view, uh, which I believe is seven. And now I want to move it <coughs> in the Y direction, uh, direction. So S and Y, whoops, not S and Y, sorry. Just right click to cancel that. G and Y, and then move it into position. There we go. I'm trying to get these distances right. So I've just zoomed in a little bit. So G and Y again, and then somewhere around there, I believe. Okay, so that's our corner post, and if we go uh, press 1 on the numpad again, that should be in about the right place. Okay, so I'm only really, really going to model a quarter of this, um, so I'm not going to copy this over just yet, because I am going to update and map all this geometry before I, uh, I mirror it around. Okay, so if I look at my 3D view, I can see there's a definite proud post coming out right down the middle between uh, these two panels, one of which, well, this one uh, will be a door and the other of which is just, you know, part of the wall. So let's pop that in. So with this post selected, I'll press Shift and D, move that over to the center. Now I can really get the center here if I press the N key and set its X parameter to zero. Okay, and now I can uh, left mouse drag across the top polygon, uh, G and Y, not G and Y, what we're talking about, G and Z, sorry I was in mono for a moment there, and bring that down to its endpoint, and then we'll press Control L to select everything, and then we'll scale it, and I want to scale it in X. There we go. Somewhere around there, I believe. So I've, it's uh, it's all a bit thick. Uh, so I need to scale it in the Y direction. So S and Y. And I just want to bring that in somewhere around there. There we go. Right, let's go back to our front spot. <coughs> okay, so the next bit we'll model is kind of the... Uh, little strip across the top where it steps in uh, which is this bit up here it's a very mild step actually this post seems to go through all of those 
so I'm going to raise that top up a little bit the blueprint doesn't make that clear and there's another reason you know why I like to have the 3d reference uh, so what do we want G and Z and I'll just take that up to there there we go okay so when we come back we'll start to uh, create this top bit and start putting all those things together and closing it off so I'll talk to you then okay so these little steps uh, are going to be fairly straightforward let me press one again sorry I didn't mean to move that uh, oh, <laughs> done it again there we go um, so uh, I want to block kind of the top off first and I'm going to put a little cube in there just to kind of fill the top in and I'm going to use the the base as a prototype for that so uh, let's select a polygon on the base and then press Control and L and Shift D to duplicate and then I'm um, going to press uh, right, <laughs> right click and then GZ and move that up and I want that to be somewhere around there uh, but I don't want it to extend there that's another bit so we can see that um, this is kind of raised from that and over the top uh, I just basically want to form this first step up the top here so I'm going to shrink that down a bit so I want to resize it in everything but the height so if I press uh, G and then shift Z it will whoops not G sorry I keep doing that I do apologize uh, I, I'm not trying to confuse you I'm confusing myself um, so it's S and shift Z and then I'll bring that in to just inside that post and then if we select this top um, polygon and this time we do want G and we do want Z I'm going to bring it up to somewhere around there I think that's where our first step is uh, I'm going to bring that down just a little bit I can see I'm a little bit high whoops G and Z and then down to there there we go so now I've kind of formed the um, limit of this little step here and to do well to do the little step initially um, I want to put some detail in there or put a little strip in uh, so we'll just use one polygon from our piece there so I'm going to go uh, out of ghost mode for a second and then just select it and then go back into ghost mode and then press uh, shift and D and then right click and then G I'm going to move it down into position so I've got one edge butted up against the middle here if I select or go into edge mode and select this one I'm going to go G and X I'll bring that in and then I'll select the bottom edge and then G and Z to move it up there we go I might bring it in a little bit more when I put this uh, last bit of batten in uh, but for now that's pretty good so this line I want to be on the zero point so if you haven't yet yeah, press N and then in the X coordinate just put it onto zero and that will put it exactly where we want it there we go okay so to put these little steps in it's pretty straightforward uh, oh this is a bit high yet so let me just move that down there we go uh, we go to the uh, edge uh, loop cut and then point at one edge so if I click there and then my loop cut comes up my loop cut options and I can increase this and that's going to increase to two which is perfect and I'll go into a perspective mode now and then uh, actually this is at the wrong end always good to go into perspective occasionally whoops so I'll select a polygon on there press ctrl L and I'll move it into position so this will be G and Y I'll bring that over here now I believe my normals for this 
are probably pointing in the wrong direction. So let me come out of X-ray mode. And a good way of finding out whether that is uh, true or not is if you uh, go to your overlays up here. Uh, that's not it, that's it. We can have face orientation. And I can see which ones are orienting in the right way. So uh, blue is pointing one way, red is pointing the other way. Um, so I believe all of those back ones are the wrong way. So let me select a polygon on each, press Control L, and then uh, on the mesh menu up here, we have normals and flip. And now we're all pointing in the same direction, which is perfect. Okay, so for these ones, to put the step in, uh, all I need to do is extrude these a bit by bit. So if I select all of them, and then use the extrude regions, and I'm going to bring that out, but I'm going to note how far I'm bringing it out. So that's 0 0.005 meters, uh, which I imagine is somewhere around five millimeters. There we go. So I want to do the same step again, but uh, first I want to select fewer polygons. So this one's only going to have one step out, uh, but this one is going to come out another step again five millimeters and then finally the last one uh, so what do we want uh, extrude already an extrude I'll pull that out and pop in five millimeters there we go so that's uh, that's all very well and good but uh, there's a whole bunch of geometry in here we don't need so what I'm going to do is select the geometry initially so select one thing control L shift H to hide everything else now I don't need anything that's on this end and I don't need anything that's on this end. I'm going to come out of uh, X-ray mode. I'm out of X-ray mode or am I? I am. I'm going to turn those uh, face orientations off. Now it's going to select the whole thing. There we go. So I'll just individually select these bits and press delete and faces, same on the other side and the same on the back because nobody's ever going to see them so you know no point in them being there they just complicate all sorts of things like you know having too much geometry having geometry that's not going to be used taking up space in UVs um, you know when you want to bevel something and they can cause issues so I, I just find it best to remove them right so let's unhide everything else and there we go that's what we got so far okay so uh, next we'll pop in a door um, and then we'll see how that works or how that goes okay talk to you then Okay, so before I put the door in, I've got another batten to put down here. And so we're just going to use our original from the middle here. So if I select that one and press Control L, that didn't seem to select anything. Control L. There we, let's switch that type to normal there. And Shift and D to duplicate it. And then right click. And then it'll be G and X. I'm going to move that over in that direction. There we go. Now I have both of these, you know, they're the same size and they're, you know, perfectly lined up. So all I need to do for these two is cut a line and then uh, to mark the top and then one vertically to mark the actual door itself. So let's do this. So with the loop cut, I'm going to click and hold and then slide it up till it's just there. And if I haven't gone quite far enough, if I zoom in, uh, G and Z, and then just adjust it in. There we go. So the Z coordinates for this is 1.64 and a bit. So I'm just going to copy that value because I'm going to need it. So Control C. And then click out and now I can put the same cut on this other button 
so let's pop that in yeah now I haven't bothered to move this because I now know where the value is so if I select the Z coordinate and press enter that will go in there perfectly similarly when I cut top to bottom and move that up to the edge there just over the edge I think to make sure and that's a little too far so G and Y just move that backwards that's okay I now know the Y coordinate so control C and then come out of that and now I can cut this one I managed to unhide something somewhere along the lines I can't see this to cut it uh, let's go to poly mode come out of that there we go select and control L shift H and let's use our loop slice again or loop cut pop in the Y value uh, control V and that should line those up perfectly so Alt H to unhide. Now this line, whoops, need to come out of the loop cut tool. So this line and this line now form our door. So we just need to bridge them together. Uh, I believe that's under edge, bridge edge loops. And now we have a door. Uh, well, a, a panel. <laughs> uh, so that was a bit of a faff. Sorry about that. Uh, in the next one what we'll do is we'll start to um, cut in the detail for the door uh, so I shall talk to you then okay so the first thing I want to do is separate this door from the frame that we've built it from uh, so under mesh with the polygon selected uh, we go down to separate and selection and now that's gone off to a different layer which we can merge back a little later uh, so I've managed to hide my view there uh, I've just press control and space to uh, unhide it and now that should be this layer so let me come out of editing mode first and then I'll select that layer and now I can work on this in isolation let me hide the, uh, the rest of it and I want to be in the front view now and transparency mode or x-ray mode because I want to be able to see where each of our windows and each of our panels is so what should we do first uh, well I'm gonna I'm gonna move the bottom so if I go to edit mode in edge mode I'll just grab that bottom piece and move that up so uh, G and Z just move that up there we go <coughs> and now basically I want to split each of these um, or this polygon into pieces to have one going down the middle not one at the top or the bottom of each panel but one between them so if we use our cut tool again and click I'm just going to increase the amount of cuts uh, until I get the amount of cuts I need so I've got one there I've got one there I've got one there three that's perfect now they're not necessarily exactly where I want them um, because there is some difference between uh, how it's going to work uh, but that's good enough so I'll go back to select mode and just going to grab this bottom one and use G and Z to move that up now the reason, let's move this one as well, uh, the reason I do this uh, is for geometry's sake. So let me move this one down uh, because I want to put these windows in, I want to put these panels in, uh, but I don't want so much geometry that it's crazy. And if I cut top, bottom, left, right, I'm going to end up with lots and lots of cuts and I don't want it. So what I want to do now is select each of these polygons Oops, and use an inset so if I press the I key I get an inset and when I click in I can change the properties so I want to set it to individual so each one bevels individually and then I want to set a lower number than that 
uh, somewhere below that I think so 0.05 perhaps and that's going to get them roughly to the right kind of size but they're not lined up of course <coughs> because our cuts are at different uh, levels and they're not all equal so what we can do now is start to line it up now this side isn't too bad so we'll just press uh, G and X and move that over a little uh, this top one if I deselect by clicking off I use G and Z and move that down and this one is not quite big enough uh, because well it just isn't uh, so S and Z and scale that up and I've scaled that up by 1.063 and that's likely to be the same scale that I need for the other ones. So let me select that one and press S and whoops, uh, Z. And I'm going to paste that value in there just to give myself a little bit of precision or the illusion of it at least. Now this one seems to be smaller than all of the others. Uh, so I'm going to move it up. Uh, G and Z till it's roughly in the right place and then S and Z I'm going to whoops, squeeze that down a bit so any kind of micro differences in these isn't going to be an issue for me because you know things like this put together generally speaking aren't all that even there's a certain amount of you know craftsmanship to it um, that you know a machine in a factory would do perfectly but uh, you know somebody making it by hand wouldn't okay so I'm just going to come out of uh, that mode and then I'm going to select each of these panels and now we use an extrude so I want extrude along normal I'm just going to push that back a little bit and that's going to start to form the basis of our panels okay Let's come out of extra mode for a moment, see what we've got. Uh, Alt H to unhide, not, <laughs> don't need to do that, I just need to unhide the uh, other model. There we go. And as you can see, I've done it completely the wrong way around. Uh, so if I select everything with Control L and then rotate around uh, the dirt Z, just click in and then I'll type in 180 and that should be good. There we go. Uh, yeah that's not perfect um, so that's moved it which I really really don't like um, the center must be off some way shape or form uh, but never mind I can kind of reverse fix this <laughs> by selecting these panels and just moving them, moving them the other way uh, so it will be G and Y and I'll bring those this way and there we go now it's the right way okay so um, we'll do a little bit of a tidy up and then uh, I think we'll come in and start to uh, well we've got to put the top window in and we've got to build the top of the box uh, so we'll start on all that in the next couple of sections so uh, talk to you okay so let's pop this window in so looking at our 3d kind of perspective view uh, these look all pretty flush to each other so that's how I'm gonna make them so uh, let's come around here I'm gonna select my polygon possibly Are you gonna select am I on the right thing there we go didn't draw it enough Ah, I'm in invisibility, in x-ray mode. X-ray mode can sometimes make it a little bit difficult to select things. Um, and I often forget when I'm in it, so sorry about that. Uh, so what I want to do here is just form a little border. Uh, so let's go to the front view. Now I'm going to go to x-ray mode and I just want a, the border to come in, you know, around about there. So let us inset first. So we use the I key. And bring that in there we go 
and now what I want to be able to do is to cut this into six pieces you know one across horizontally and two vertically now if I leave it attached to the the um, the geometry we have we're going to end up with uh, a lot of cuts and that's somewhat I try and avoid so here we could uh, detach this again or rather split this one uh, so if we go to oops that's minimize that that you can't see uh, if we split by selection it will split it from the geometry but leave it um, try to say it will leave it in the you know the right uh, in the same uh, model so uh, if I now press control L it shouldn't select anything else whereas if I select you know one of our other polygons here and press control L it will select so this one now I can cut independently so let's uh, turn off x-ray mode so I can select it properly and shift H and now I want to cut it once across and twice uh, vertically there we go so now I've got my three kind of windows uh, sorry six windows can't count now uh, so now if I go back to selection mode I'll select each of these and we want to inset again uh, fortunately we still have individual ticked here so I'll just bring those in a little bit not quite that much I think somewhere around there and then we'll use our extrude normals and bring that in there we go so alt h to unhide everything else and now we have our little window blocks there we go okay so <clears throat> a little bit tidy up first of all uh, there's going to be some geometry on the other piece so uh, select that cube and then shift H to hide everything else so there's going to be plenty of geometry on this that I'm not going to require so let's just trim some of that out while I'm thinking about it so tab to enter edit mode those two aren't going to be needed those two are definitely not going to be needed and probably a goodly proportion of um, that corner post so let me delete those now you've got a bit of a choice here um, so for this corner post I'm not going to use a lot of that geometry however if you think about it if I cut I can't delete the whole polygon but I could cut it but that doesn't reduce the amount of polygons I have uh, I'm still going to have the same amount of polygons to work with so it's not really saving me memory wise um, so yeah you could cut it it will save you a minor amount of space on the UV uh, or we could leave it as it is and it's not going to make that much difference so I think I'm going to leave it as it is for that bit okay so I'm just going to select the top and the bottom and press Control L and then press H to hide those and delete the caps off so don't need that don't need that all that all that that all that that one or that one or that one or that one uh, so that's straight getting rid of polygons uh, which will save on a little bit of memory space and will save uh, some cuts when I'm doing my UV cutting a little later in fact some of these won't need cutting at all uh, so let's get rid of those two delete those out okay so uh, you know go back to object mode there we go and alt H to show everything again there we go so now we have basically the quarter or a quarter of a TARDIS uh, well nearly a quarter so what we'll do in the next couple of bits is just expand this out so that you know we've got a, a full side and then B we can um, mirror it and rotate it to you know make a full TARDIS and then we'll do the top we're going to do the top a little bit separately because uh, I think we don't really need to do too much modeling up there and you know the quartering and mirroring might be a little over the top 
So I shall talk to you then. Okay, so we're going to want to use a mirror modifier on this to uh, bring it over. And we've got two models, so we can do them separately. Uh, this one, which is actually a panel, let's call it panel. There we go. Um, is already and raring to go, really. Uh, we've not UV mapped it, but uh, we can do that in a few, I think. So, with that selected, we'll go to the modifiers, add a mirror, and that should put it in place. Let's have a look. Yep, looks like it's put it exactly where I want it. Now, the other piece, the body, let's call it. Whoops, come on with the properties. I know there is somewhere. I've shot past them, never mind. Um, I'm just going to hide the rest for the moment. Uh, I need to cut this in half. So let's do that uh, with our, or in edit mode, so tab, and then we'll use our cut tool. So I want to cut straight down the middle there. And now I don't want any of the polygons that go towards the middle. So I'll just select, whoops, just select those and then I'll delete them. Now I want to make sure that this point is exactly on zero. It should be, but sometimes I make a mistake and it's not. So I'm going to select that center edge and just check the X um, value and it's zero. So that's perfect. So now uh, let's do that. What do I want? Come on brain. Ah, I want to go out of edit mode. So tab and then onto the modifiers, add a mirror and now we've got one side. And if I Alt H to unhide everything else, we now have one side of the bottom. So that's perfect. And we need to do some other things. First of all, I need to do it front to back. And for that, actually, I'm going to detach the top and the bottom. So let's go to edit mode. Need to have the right thing selected, I suppose. So Shift and H, there we go. Going to select the top by just going into edit mode. Oh, come on, go into edit mode. Helps if you press the right button. Uh, I seem to have something wrong here, so let's do Alt H. Yes, I had them hidden. And now I can detach these. So they're both selected. So uh, again, it's mesh and separate selection and that will go to its own model so for our original model we can now mirror this in another direction so we could put a second modifier on it let me go back to object mode and the second modifier will be another mirror so modify or modifier and mirror and this time I want it in Y there we go and now we've got two sides now the posts are done, uh, but I need to fill in these pieces um, on the other side. So I'm just going to press Shift H to get rid of everything else and go into edit mode with tab. And now I want to select oops, this piece. So um, <coughs> all of these pieces um, are virtual at the minute. So to um, make them you know, real, uh, I need to apply the modifiers. So let's do that. So click on the little download, duplicate, not duplicate, sorry. Let's click the X to get rid of that. Uh, it's not gonna let me apply it because I'm not in object mode. So back to object mode, click the little down arrow and apply. 
click the little down arrow and apply. And now if I select um, in edit mode, so could tab to go to edit mode, uh, I want all of these pieces. So control L just to make sure I've got everything. Uh, I don't think I have got everything. There we go. And control L again. There we go. Now I can duplicate these and rotate them. So under mesh, this time uh, I want, sorry, shift and D to duplicate them and then press the uh, right mouse button to put them back where they started and then we want to rotate by 90 degrees so S and Z and just start it off and then type 90 degrees there we go let's uh, press oops, U to unhide not U to unhide or H to unhide and go back to object mode and all H to unhide everything else. So now we've got pretty much everything in there um, except all of the panels. So uh, I'm not going to do all the panels just yet. Uh, I'm going to wait ever so slightly before I do some uh, beveling and UVing on these uh, because these are more complicated than the outer shell. And because they're more complicated, it's going to take me longer to do that beveling and uh, UV mapping if I have to do it multiple times. OK, so um, that's that. We'll start to do that beveling and detailing in, in the next section. Right, so um, sorry if it's been a bit hard to see so far. Uh, I had my um, wireframe turned off for some bizarre and inexplicable reason. I probably did it by accident. Sorry about that. Uh, but we're, we're back now. So uh, on our doors, let's press, I'm in object mode, shift H to hide everything else. Uh, I want to uh, select all of our open edges around our panels now. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode and then alt click and then shift alt click on each of those open edges. And if I'm lucky, I can do that one as well. I can. So then it's Control B for bevel, and just click in the viewport and somewhere around two millimeters, I imagine, and a rounding or a segment value of two, I think, is going to be enough. And because we've got our mirror modifier on, that's doing the same on the other side. So then I want to do around each of these uh, window pieces. So select all those, control B, click in, type in your two millimeters. We've still got our two uh, segments, that's good. They're suitably rounded, I think. Uh, now I want to do these inner parts as well. So let me click off that and then Alt and click. And you may find it doesn't actually go all the way around. And you know, that's because the geometry is a bit weird and it doesn't know what the flow is. Or there are more than there's more one than one possibility of the flow. So in this case, just select the panels in uh, poly mode and then switch to edge mode and it will select the edges around. Uh, and then we can control B again, just move, click, type in your two millimeters, and there we are. Now that's nicely beveled and we like a good bevel okay so we also want to uh, kind of uv map this but uh, for that i'm going to have to well i'm not going to have to uh, but i want to set some zones up so first of all i'm going to go down to my materials and i have a default material which everything is currently on but i want some new materials so these are going to be window. So I need to click plus and new and name it. So window. Now I could give it a slightly different base color just to make sure that it's actually doing something. Uh, and then assign. And when I click off, no. Okay, let's try that again. Just reselect and assign. 
need to be in this mode. Foolish boy. Need to be in the textured mode to see <laughs> to see the difference. It's my fault. Sorry. Uh, so these ones I now want to hide because I've done them. So everything around the outside up to this edge is going to be um, the the actual box itself. So if I select around here and then use Control and Numpad Plus, I can select up to that area and then hide it. And then I can just box select over the top of that, preferably in X-ray mode, so I make sure I get everything. And these ones I want another new material and we'll call it window frame. And again, I'll give it a slightly different color and hit a sign. There we go. See that worked. Uh, so let's Alt H result. There it is. And now we've just got the default uh, material, uh, which will call box. And then that will apply to all of our uh, other pieces, the, the vast majority of which are going to be on that material anyway. Uh, so let's come out of edit mode by pressing tab and then Alt H to unhide everything and we're getting close. So uh, what I need to do is UV these before I um, duplicate them. Uh, so we'll do that in the next section. See you then. Okay, so let's UV these doors. Uh, so with that selected in object mode, I'll press Shift H to hide everything else. Uh, I only need to map one side of this, but I do want to add some materials in. So uh, I need to be on the material preview mode there. Uh, so I see what's happening. Uh, so I'm gonna add a new material and call it the window. And then in edit mode, press tab, select the polygons I want attached to that material. That should be it. Uh, select the material and then uh, click assign. Let's give that a, a color just to start with. There we go. Not the final color obviously. And I'll just hide those to make it easier. Uh, so uh, I want to select all these in here but to do that I'm going to select around the outside of it first and then hide that with the H key and then just uh, left mouse box select over the rest just to make sure control L and this one wants to be uh, the window frame so let's call this frame and then we'll give that a different color as well And then click assign. So that helpfully, um, you know, separates things out for us. Uh, I'll just press Alt H to unhide everything, and I could just then rename my material here to uh, box. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to um, UV these bit by bit. So let's go to the UV room to start with. Switch over to the material view. And then with the frame or the window selected, whichever you want first, I'm just going to hit select. And then for this, I'm going to just whoops, press A to select everything and then unwrap them. Don't really need to define edges for this, uh, but we can do. Uh, I believe under the UV uh, menu here, we have seams from islands. So that will define those uh, islands uh, to have a seam. Okay, so uh, with though with that done, I'll just make sure I've got those selected still, and I'll hide them. Uh, and then we'll select the frame, so frame, and then Shift H. Now here I want to mark each of these d diagonals. So in edge mode, uh, the first one is just Alt uh, and click, and then Shift Alt click for all of the rest of them. 
takes a moment or two got quite a few to select but basically what I'm doing here is splitting these into um, directional kind of islands I want them all to be pointing in the same direction because when I apply like a grain to them I want the grain to be going in the same direction as the island so if the island is pointing up I want the grain to be pointing up so uh, but the actual effect here will be uh, the shorter ones it will be horizontal uh, but the taller ones it will be vertical but that's how you build you know like a wooden frame like this uh, so let's pop that there there's another one there there we go whoops it's going to make sure that that seems to have gone all the way around so it's right click mark seams got nice seams all over there and then a and a and right click and unwrap uh, all looks like I missed one I can see it's at the bottom corner so alt click right click uh, mark seam I to select everything right click and unwrap there we go and you'll see all these are pointing in the same direction and that's perfect that's exactly what I want um, but this is kind of a, a texturing consideration more than anything um, I do a bit of texturing as you probably aware um, so I've learned over the years that it's best to have all of these things pointing in the same direction there are times when you don't want it that way but generally speaking you do okay so let's uh, <clears throat> unhide those shift H and hide whoops <laughs> all H so let's just select this bit by bit uh, so I'll select the frame and I'll select the window and H there we go so it's the same principle for uh, all of these pieces here essentially um, except for these middle bits so let's just select those first so alt click there uh, shift click shift click shift click and then control plus plus just to expand the selection to where we defined the seams um, or have we defined the seams no we haven't yet so we're going to define some seams around these edges so if I press shift H and then A over here I'm going to right click and unwrap and they're all pretty good you'll see that uh, in this case this one is pointing in a different direction to these and that's not what I want but if I pack these it might figure it out uh, I just have to press A first so UV and pack yes see it's oriented them all in the same way now which is perfect uh, so I want to put a seam around the edge of those so I'll just press A UV and then seams from islands and you'll see they appeared in red over here now okay so we're gonna whoops unhide over here with all H and then it's um, just the box texture I want so I'll select those whoops <laughs> I'll select them not assign them and press shift H to hide everything else uh, these islands I don't want at the moment uh, so I'm just going to select those whoops and then control plus plus and H so much like the window frame for these ones I want each of these corners to be cut off whoops and press the full stop on the main key there I'm just making sure that's gone right round it has and then shift alt click on each of these other ones and this will help me you know create these directional islands as I call them uh, I'm not sure that's what they called everywhere else but that's what I call them there we go and then it's right click and mark seams there we go a a right click unwrap and now I've got the same direction of things yeah well, wherever I put the grain it's going to go in a naturalistic way as long as it matches the UV okay so that should be UV now so let's uh, unhide everything with an alt and an H 
and let's pack it. So A to select everything, UV, pack islands. Just watch for your orientation, see if it flips any around. Doesn't appear to have done so, so I don't have to do anything here. Okie doke. So there is a small issue here in that uh, I've only got one side done. Uh, and when I do it to the other side, um, they're going to overlap and I don't really want them to overlap. So it's at this point I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. I'm going to apply my modifier and then if I hit tab to go into edit mode again and select everything and everything. So that's with the A key. I'll just repack these islands. Seem to have some extra bits that I didn't have before. Uh, they may be in addition to it might be stuff that's just hidden out of the way. Uh, I'm going to research that <laughs> uh, in between videos and then I'll come back and uh, show you what, I'd, what I've done. Okay, so I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I've had a look around it and I can't actually see any issue. And then I thought, well, perhaps there isn't an issue. Perhaps just the original one wrap, unwrapping one side, the other side doesn't unwrap perfectly. So what I'm going to do, uh, or what I've done, uh, I'm just going to hit the A key here and right click and unwrap again. And yes, sure enough, it's just some of the things hadn't unwrapped you know, properly on the mirrored side. Uh, so let's repack this. So UV and pack. Check your orientations. Uh, they all look good. Everything looks to be pointing in the same direction. And there we have it. We've got one side of a UV. That's perfect. Okay, so yes, bit of a head scratcher. Not entirely sure why, um, but that's yeah, that's it really. Um, okay, so in the next section, uh, we can start to duplicate these doors round or panels rather. Talk to you then. Okay, now. Let's uh, unhide everything. So uh, I'll just press Alt H to make sure I've got no polygons hidden. Uh, then Tab to go into edit mode and then Alt H to unhide everything else. And for these, I just need to mirror this one in Y. So let's go to add modifier and mirror, uh, mirror in Y. I should, that should fit to the other side. And I'll apply this whoops that wasn't apply it was duplicate <laughs> uh, is that still there yeah so apply and then we can duplicate this uh, with shift D and then right click rotate and Z so R and Z and spin that around a little bit whoops let me just undo a couple of times there we go. So shift and D, right click, rotate <laughs> around Z and just rotate that round. The reason I uh, had to redo that is because I clicked before I got down to this little fly out here and it applied it and you know I couldn't type in my 90 degrees. There we go. So now we have most of a TARDIS. Let me just, uh, I think I'm missing something. Yes, wireframe. That's what I'm missing. So that's what it's looking like. Uh, I also see I've missed some of the frame as I've gone round. That was foolish of me. Uh, so are these, where are these bits? So the centre bits are on there, the side bits aren't. I wonder why that is. Let me just shift H this. Uh, yeah, these bits haven't duplicated round. So that was foolish of me. Let's fix that up. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's go to edit mode. And the easiest way for me to do this is just to select them. And then control L to make sure I've got the whole thing. Just looking to make sure I've got it. 
<laughs> before I make another mistake. And uh, let's shift D. I'm going to move these to the other side. Uh, I'm going to press right, uh, right uh, mouse first and then G and Y. I'm going to bring them over here and then rotate and Z and flip them around 90 degrees. Uh, not 90 degrees, 180 degrees. There we go. Now just getting a little bit closer. Think about they are there. Am I losing my noodles? There is something wrong with my brain. Oh, they're there. It's just they're not rotated round. I must have missed the selection. Okay, let me undo a couple of times. And now, yes, I've got those selected. So control L. This is just missed these out in the selection when I rotated them. So control L. There we go. Shift D, right click, R to rotate, Z to constrain, and then rotate 90 degrees. There we go. Foolish boy. Sorry if I confused you on that. Certainly not my intention. Right, you to unhide. Make sure there's no polygons things. It's not you, it's Alt H. And then tab to go back into um, object mode, and then Alt H. To bring everything back right so that's the essentially the kind of main body done um, we need to UV and put some bevels into the uh, the actual kind of frame of the TARDIS um, and then you know we'll go on and finish the top off so I shall talk to you in the next section Um, okay, so we're going to have a go at now at um, a different kind of beveling, a, a quicker bevel. So I'm just going to select the frame and press Shift H. And now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Um, not that it's particularly messy, it's just that uh, for this method, having uh, unnecessary geometry is not necessarily a good thing. So let's have a look. Uh, let's go to edit mode with tab. And I'll go to edge mode. Whoops, oh, I'm already in it. So, any kind of additional lines here that we've used to kind of extract our geometry and you know line things up um, is not necessarily a good thing. So I'm just going to press Alt there, and that's not actually selecting. The likelihood is there's some that's not welded in there. So let me. Just select uh, A and then go on to Mesh and Clean Up and Merge by Distance. And that's merged a bunch of vertices. Some things weren't worded together, you know, some things you know, may have been overlapping, but it's merged them all together and that's perfect. Okay, so let's uh, go back in here. Now I'll press Alt and now it's selecting right around there. Perfect, and I'll press uh, Alt, Shift Alt, and click there. And that vertical one doesn't need to be there either. So I'll dissolve those edges. Let's do that one too. And I'll just do one side on this, and then we'll move on. There we go. Dissolve edges. Okay, so that's advisable to do um, and I'll demonstrate why it's advisable to do it uh, in a minute. So back into object mode I'm going to go to the modifiers tab and we're going to apply a bevel modifier and what that bevel modifier does is uh, bevels by an amount, uh, with segments uh, and at a limited angle. So for this one anything beyond 30 degrees it will bevel. Uh, we don't necessarily want that. Uh, I'm going to take that up to 89 just in case I've got some weird little bit of geometry that's not really you know how I want it to be. So as you can see that's beveling that and if I increase this to 2 
you'll see it's still beveling and if I set my amount to say two millimeters there we go we're getting a nice little bevel there nice rounded bevel perhaps two millimeters is a little much uh, in this case so I'm going to do it to one there we go so if I have a look around here now there we go that's all looking very nice now providing all of your geometry is kind of consistent with that um, that's that's terrific but if your um, if you have a particularly small piece of geometry that won't take a one millimeter bevel which sounds kind of weird um, it would have to be really small for that uh, you might want to separate that bit into a different mesh um, and that you know can have uh, you know various uh, implications various implications what am I talking about you yeah. know if you separate it into a different mesh you know it's fine but you've got another mesh to deal with that you're gonna have to merge back again it's not really a big deal but you know it can be a bit fiddly uh, but just be aware now I said earlier that some of these things can cause an issue and generally speaking you know having edges in here is if you have an odd edge that you know just doesn't conform to the general um, pattern of the rest of your pieces this is a very simple one everything's 90 degrees but if you had something that's just a bit more than 90 degrees or something that's a bit less or you know there's just some curve in there somewhere you might end up beveling something you don't want to bevel and that's um, again you can either do that by splitting it off to a new mesh uh, or you could select edges individually to uh, bevel which is why you know I show you that general method because it's the one I use most often um, it can get you know if you've got a really complicated model you can spend a lot of time tracking down an issue whereas selecting beveling selecting beveling you know it's a bit time consuming it's a bit boring but you know it works usually <coughs> excuse me sorry about that it's quite early in the morning for me and uh, my body hasn't recovered yet uh, from sleep yeah i'm that old okay um so that's beveling uh, as a whole rather than you know selecting each individual line and it's a real speed speed saver but just be aware that there are some issues with it um, that you know you might want to uh, keep an eye out for I mean, for example doing it on um, on a complete organic model is probably not the best idea because everything's curves and everything's going to bevel and um, it, yeah it's not going to look good okay so uh, what do we want to do uh, so we need to uv this bit so we'll do that in the next section okay so UVing this is going to be relatively simple fingers crossed and um, so let's go to the UV editing room now because we deleted a whole bunch of interior polygons the only kind of solid things that need unwrapping here are these edge posts so let's go to edit mode and then I'm going to select one line on the inside of each of these posts uh, why the inside well because that's where the seam is nobody's ever going to see it in there so it's a good place to you know pop a seam so let's mark that as a seam and press a and a right click and unwrap and there we are we have a lovely set of uh, unwrapped posts now some of these are vertical and some are horizontal but let's press a and then go to UV and pack islands and the packers oriented everything in the same way so that's perfect uh, I don't like having them pointing in different directions as I said if I'm going to put any sort of grain on this any sort of directional grain I need everything pointing in the same way okay so what should we do next well I think next we're going to have to start on the base let's uh, go back to object mode and alt h2 and hide everything yes the base and the top uh, because i think we're all good 
for the uh, the basic body. Uh, we've got a few little details to put in, but I want to get the you know the shape in first. So when we come back, we're going to have a look at the top and start to build this kind of stepped uh, situation going on here. So I'll talk to you then. Right, so let's have a look where we are. So if I Alt H, whoops, now I'm in edit mode. Alt H, there we go. And press the one key. Um, I can see that actually these posts go up a little higher and that's borne out by the 3D view there. So I've I made a small error there. Uh, actually, it's probably more than a small error because I've cut geometry off. Uh, okay, well, let's deal with that. So Shift H, I will select your frame model and then press Shift H. And then in edit mode, I'm just going to select the top there. I'm in edge mode for that because I have to know that I'm an idiot and I deleted some geometry. I need to be in X-ray mode for that to work properly. So it's back to one and select across there. Right, so I need to move these up a little bit. So uh, G and Z, and I'll just move them up a teeny weeny bit. And yes, I deleted those tops, uh, so I'm going to have to put them back in again. So if I press uh, Alt Select and then Shift Alt Select around the rest of these caps, I can press the F key and that will fill those in. Now, it's not perfect because uh, I've got a bevel in there and that is causing me some grief. Um, it's not going to be an, a perfect um, square up there, or is it? No, it is because um, I've got the bevel modifier on and the bevel modifier isn't applied yet. And because of that, the actual underlying geometry is a square. So now that I've applied the uh, the bevel to it, um, I've added my square in and it's re-beveled. So that's a kind of another good thing about the um, the bevel modifier at an object level rather than a uh, you know selecting line by line. Okay, perfect. That made life much much easier. I like that. Uh, I'm also, or I've also noticed that actually, if we look at our, let me, um, Alt H, there we go. If I actually look at these posts, they're actually considerably a lot more worn and smoother. So my kind of one millimeter bevel on that is probably not good enough. So let me shift H on that one so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to extend that bevel to say five millimeters. There we go, and that's a bit smoother. Let's see how far I can push it. It's largely going to be constrained by um, this area. I don't think I can go much more than that. Uh, so if I put it to 10 millimeters, mm, I think it's self-limiting. Uh, five millimeters. Yeah, see it didn't change. Uh, okay, so that's about as far as I can go with that. If you wanted to smooth these even more, you might split them off into a new mesh and apply their own bevel to them. Okay, so, uh, oh, H. So this top piece, uh, I want to step up a few times. So let's go into front mode. So one on the numpad, and then I'll select that top base there. And we'll just come out of front mode quickly, go into edit mode and select that top polygon. I'm in X-ray mode, so it's making selection difficult. There we go, got that now. So how many times does it step up? Uh, one, two, and then it slopes, I believe. So if I go into front mode, yeah, I can just about see that. So I think it probably goes up to the level of the uh, the posts there, and then up once more. There we go. Right, so what I'm going to do is use my inset, so I. I'm going to drag it out 
to somewhere about there and then we use our extrude to bring that up to just about the level of those tops there and I'm just going to go to front mode again because now I need to make sure that I'm flush with these corners for the next one so let's go back out of that and then we'll inset again with the I key whoops oh, I've really overblown this oh come on John there we go so I'm just touching the corners of that uh, of those posts there with that and then we'll use extrude to bring that up and now if I go to front mode I can see how far I need to bring that up whoops I accidentally dropped the tool there so I'll just go to selection mode select that top that's going to be one of those days is it there we go and G and Z and down okay so now we need a bevel to bring it in sorry an inset to bring it in so the I key and I'll bring that in that far and then go to front mode G and Z and move it up I can see I'm a little bit too big so I've still got it selected so I'll press S to scale just scale that in until it's right there we go so that's the uh, basics of the top done it doesn't quite look like this one but this one differs from the TARDIS a little bit um, I'm not saying that either one of them is absolutely true um, but yeah I've had a look at an actual picture of the TARDIS from the TV show and for example it doesn't have this doesn't have these longer pieces it's the same all the way around um, so I'm not going to be completely convinced that you know the top is exactly the same in fact if you look at UK police boxes or vintage police boxes or somewhere along those lines you'll find there's all sorts of different designs from different areas you know different police authorities etc okay so what should we do next I think what we'll do next is have a look at uh, putting the light on top uh, which is probably going to be the hardest bit <laughs> because you know it's not necessarily all that clear as to how it works let's just press one uh, yeah so this is kind of a, a tube and it's got a little light over the top of it with a little metal frame uh, I might have to make up some of that but we'll see okay so I'll talk to you in the next okay so you know there's a lot of thought and debate goes on about you know whether you should have a you know a single shell um, and if you're doing it for 3d printing you almost certainly do need a single shell model um, but generally speaking um, you know for visualizations and such like that you you don't really um, and in fact you'd overblow the geometry for a model quite a lot by doing so but I do want to show you how to do one thing which is insert a cylinder into a square so uh, first of all I need a little bit more geometry because um, there's not enough sides on a square you know with just four sides to put a cylinder into it so we need a little bit extra so let's use our cut tool our loop slice loop cut and I'll put a cut down that way and a cut down that way and that's giving me a, a little bit extra perhaps not enough uh, but you know we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see as we go so then in poly mode I'm going to select this top and then inset it a little bit so I'll press the I key Oops, just bring that in ever so slightly and then I'm going to delete it there we go Oop, I think I deleted the wrong bit there so delete and faces no I did it's a hole I just I'm seeing you know a big polygon underneath okay so now we need a cylinder to put into it so if I 
add a new cylinder and in this case it's going to be eight sides but I might go to 16 and then put some triangles in so let's go 16 and uh, let's tab through and my radius is not going to be uh, needed at that but uh, we we'll shall see where are we so there we go so let's resize that with the scale key or the scale uh, tool so s and then i'll move it upwards gz whoops no i've done it wrong sorry <laughs> gz there we go and then we have a huge one on top so we use scale again so s and i'll scale that right down come on there we go and i'll pop that on top so g z and i'll move it down so now uh, i've got a whole bunch of polygons um and a whole bunch of empty space so i've only you know given myself eight sides to connect to 16 which means you know one's you know at least um going to be triangle uh, a triangle rather so let's line them up first so i need to know where the bottom of the piece is so that's my z coordinate there and i need to know where the oops let's press alt there the top of the square is so or the yeah that is the top of the square so it's a 2.013 uh, and a bit so i'll use Control c to copy that value and then i'll select the bottom of the cylinder and paste that value in and now they line up so i don't need that bottom uh, face there so let's get rid of that and now we can start to bridge them up so uh where's my select there it is so if i select these two for example and these two i can bridge them uh, so if we go to edge and bridge See, I've got my uh, mirror modifier on here, so it's uh, doing that for us. So that one and that one, and bridge. So, whoops, edge and bridge. And we'll do the same on the other side. Edge and bridge. There we go. And now we've just got these kind of empty holes at the at the end. So if I uh, press alt and select alt select or shift alt select there and press f now i've got some uh, a quad here but it's not really sort of flowing very well uh, but that's okay i i can cope with that <coughs> okay so now we have a cylinder on top of our square and we can uh, adjust that a little bit to fit a little better so I want it to be a little bigger. So I'm going to select the top and then Control Plus to expand my uh, selection, and then S. And I want to uh, restrict the scaling in Z. So Shift and Z to exclude it. I'm just going to push that out a little. There we go. Okay, so now I can go to my front view and have a look at this. Oops, I want to select just that top polygon. So let's go to ghost mode. And G and Z. I'll push that up a little bit. So I can, uh, you know, now pop that little cap on at the moment. These little bits on the outside, <coughs> uh, we can cheat on that a little bit. Uh, so let's come out of uh, X ray and alt and click to select that loop and then shift and d and right click to drop it in its original place and i will now uh, scale it in z so s z bring that down a little bit and then g and z bring that down a little bit and then we'll use the extrude and bring that out uh, extrude along normal is what we want there we 
we go. Extrude along normal. Oh, come on. What's going on? It's my brain fried. Uh, let's go Shift H to make sure that I've got that selected. Let's do a mesh cleanup. See if I've managed to duplicate it twice. Nope. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, it is doing it. Just not pulling far enough. There we go. So I'll just pull that out a little. Grab this bottom loop. Oops. Need to press the Alt key. Let's go to standard mode. Get into a front view. And now I can G and Z and move that down. Select across the top in X ray mode. G and Z and move that down. There we go. So it kind of breaks the spirit of, uh, you know, attaching that originally into there. But I wanted to show you how to do it, you know, so that if you wanted to, you know, you could. Uh, you have to excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. Or am I? I'm not sure. Oh, I am, apparently. Okay, so I want to cap on this. So let's come out of X ray mode. And I'm going to use a little bit of license here. So I'm going to use an inset to start with, but I'm going to just bring that in a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to scale it so I can bring it out. There we go. And then uh, extrude. And insert uh, with the I key. It's going to bring that about halfway, I think. And then G and Z move that up. Switch into edge mode to select the edges around there. And then we'll bevel. Uh, so control B. No, that's not working. Let's escape. Go to standard mode. And then control B. Now I can dial in my bevel just to round off that top. So somewhere around there, I need to add a few levels of smoothness. And then just adjust that until it's as I want it. Somewhere around there, I think. Okay, so some of these other lines need to be uh, beveled and we can get rid of some other lines uh, or some other polygons. So I'm going to alt click around there and control B to bevel. Uh, this one, let's put five millimeters. There we go, that's nice. And then alt click at the top, control B. Uh, we'll put this at say two millimeters give it a difference there we go and now I said we need to delete some things and that's because we've got a bunch of polygons in this uh, little ring here so I'll select that polygon and control L shift H to hide going to delete the bottom and then delete that in a ring there and delete faces there we go so alt h to unhide everything else and we have a little light on top um i'm not sure it looks perfect or even right um but you know i'm reasonably happy with it uh, i might adjust a few things uh, but there's still stuff to do uh, so yeah we need to get on with that uh, so i need to bevel this top i need to bevel the bottom and we probably need a sign and some handles. Okay, so we'll bevel the top and bottom next. Uh, so I shall talk to you then. Okay, so we'll bevel the top and the bottom. And if I go to object mode, let's go to that. I'll select the top and shift H. And there we have it. Now, this is one of the reasons 
um, that I like to individually bevel things because if I apply a bevel modifier to this this whole top is going to go a bit nuts so let's add a modifier and bevel oops that's not a bevel yes it was it's just underneath if I uh, move this upwards there we go and give it a little bit of extra you'll see I'm a little bit limited on how far I can go see it's limiting itself um, to just that little bit so that's not really all that helpful to me uh, I want it you know I want to have more of a bevel than that um, so I'm going to delete that and we're going to individually bevel so let's delete that so for example on the bottom uh, I want it to be quite smooth on the top so let's do that uh, so let's go to edit mode and edges and I want to select the top and the bottom now it's not selecting all the way around which is annoying but we'll just select those polygons and then go to edge mode and now I can control B click in and I can bevel it as much as I want now that's probably uh, okay uh, but it's a little too many uh, so let's take that down to actually three I think there we go so I want quite a soft base because I believe the base is concrete and therefore you know wouldn't necessarily um, be how can I put it um, as tight as you know wood uh, but I also want to bevel these bits here so if I shift alt click each of these corners and then control B I can put a different bevel on the corners so I can make them either really soft or really tight uh, I probably don't want them as uh, soft as that but I do want them to be you know reasonably soft now this poses a little bit of a problem uh, but it's not a problem it's just depends on how you think about things uh, I don't want there to be any angons in this so I'm gonna do two things so let me just quit out of that so if I select the top if I can select the top are you gonna let me select the top I'll need to be in poly mode there we go uh, I can insert this in and just bring that in a little bit and then use the scale to bring it in a bit more so I'm bringing it in enough so that it's not going to be seen and then I'll delete it and then on the bottom which I may want to be shown I want to leave that hole so I just need to connect up a couple of lines here so if I use the knife tool which is K I can apparently not don't know what's going on there sorry so if I use the knife tool which is K I can select polygons and start to join them together and when I've finished I press the enter key and that does the job now I seem to have a little oddity going on there so let me undo that I think I cut to the wrong edge so K okay. just slide up to a vertex and select go to the other end and select and enter or click rather and then press enter and there we go we have a new line and then I should do the back as well so it's K slide to a vertex and click slide to the opposite vertex and click and press the enter key and now I've got 
quads on the bottom perfect okay so for the top we're going to do kind of a similar uh, exercise um, so for this I want to um, edit most of it actually most of it turn these to be beveled uh, but most key ones are these edges down the corners and these around here so I don't want to bevel this these intermediate ones because uh, that will just add geometry that's not necessary so if I press the alt key and select the bottom it's not going to select all the way around that's because it doesn't know so we'll just put a little inset in here to sort that out so select those press inset and bring that in I can bring it in far enough that I could probably delete it if I really wanted to let's use S to bring in some more there we go and now with the edge tool that should go right the way around there we go so shift alt and I'm going to do that for each of those verticals there we are and then each of the corners now what I want to look out for here um, is this bit at the end because we're probably going to get an issue there but we'll fix it so if I press Control and B for bevel let's click in and say two millimeters there we go so as you can see that has added some geometry in here and it's a little bit peculiar so we need to fix that up and it's actually added in a couple of polygons which we can use to um, make our join with the cylinder a little easier so if i uh, just hit the or click off that and select a polygon and control L and shift H there we go you'll see that we've got this weird polygon here now uh, which is you know not quite right so let's deal with that so I'm having trouble selecting it which is you know a first issue sometimes if you go underneath and select it from there that works uh, but in this case it is not ah yes it is so what I want to do is select these things we put in earlier and delete them because at the at this tip at this corner they're kind of intersecting and doing crazy things so I'll delete those and that one needs to go as well uh, delete faces there we go and now I have one two three four sides to connect to so I could have sort of done this earlier I suppose uh, but I didn't so I need those four there and that one that one that one and that one and then edge and bridge and now it's perfect so that should have mirrored one side yeah it's mirrored to that side so now I just need to get rid of this side oh this one this side is going to let me select it excellent so let's delete those faces and then we'll pop them back in again uh, one easy way of doing it is if you alt click you'll select all around um, which yeah actually doesn't work in this case <laughs> sorry about that so let's select each of our faces or edges to bridge and then uh, edge and bridge edge loops there we go now we have a much nicer geometry up there with no you know weird triangles or anything like that and yeah there we go perfect uh, so it's all H 
unholds that. Let's tab out of that. Uh, I do have a very strange kind of artifact here, um, which shouldn't be there. Uh, so we're going to get rid of that. So let's press tab and select over it and delete and dissolve those edges. No. Delete. Uh, is it a face? No, it's an edge. There we go. Delete edge. Don't know how that got there. Probably something I did. OK, so tab and Alt H to unhide everything. And now we've beveled just about everything to within an inch of its life. And uh, we're pretty good. Um, we need to UV map that top bit, of course, and add some materials to it. Uh, just so it works and then we can have a look at where to go next. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I notice I've missed these kind of little proud bits here. So let's pop those in. So I've got the top selected, going to edit mode. So tab, and then I'm gonna select these front pieces. Let's get out of that mode first. And I'll press Shift and D to duplicate that. And then right click to put it back to the center. Uh, and now I need to change my origin point to individual origins. So now I can scale them. So if I press S and move it in, they'll all scale in exactly the same way, uh, except they will scale according to their own origin and not as a whole which is perfect. So then we'll extrude, just bring those out a little, perhaps not quite that much. Let's go 0 0.03, there we go, that's nice. Okay, so we also have this other little inset piece, which is like a frame, and we'll do almost exactly the same for that. So let's Q to quit that, or we'll go to the selection mode. Uh, so Shift D again, just move, right click to put it back, and then we want to scale it uh, again. So we'll scale. We're already in the right origin mode. Just gonna bring it down perhaps that far, and then we'll extrude that out. There we go, and then I to inset bring that in a touch to form a little frame and then extrude again to bring that inwards. There we go. Uh, it's not quite the right proportion, but we'll alter that now. Uh, so let's, let's go back to selection mode. I'm going to press control and the uh, plus on the numpad and then shift H and I just want to grab the tops here. So I'll go into a front view, go into X-ray mode, and just select across the top. Selected a bit too much there. There we go, that's better. And then uh, Alt-H. Ah, now of course I've got everything selected. How annoying. Uh, la, 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 la. What are we going to do? Okay, well, let's come out of X ray mode and just do this selection manually. So I need to select those there. Oops, those ones there. I always try to select in an easy way. Uh, to avoid this sort of thing uh, but sometimes it's just awkward and it takes me longer to figure out how to do it than it is just to actually select and do it you know properly there we go i think i've got all the way around now so it's uh, g to move and z to constrain i'll just move that up a bit there we go okay so these of course need uh, beveling and a bit of tidy up so i'm just going to select a bit on each of them and then control and L and shift and H. 
I don't need any of these inner pieces of course delete those and then I think I'll just bevel actually these intermediate lines are causing me an issue I, you know they're just in the way just making selection more difficult than it needs to be so let's select down the centers and dissolve those edges there we go now it's easier uh, so back to there so I'll select come out of x-ray mode so I can actually select what I want to select and I'm just going to bevel those tops there so into edge mode control B click give it a value say two millimeters it's probably only needs one rounding level no two there we go and I'm going to do the same for the faces around this little frame here so alt click shift alt click shift alt click shift alt click and keep going and then control and B click in give it a value two millimeters and that should be good there okay right so let's put those bits back in again and let me press uh, or just click off there and then alt and H and we're back in the room okay so uh, sorry about that in interlude um, we need to just do a little bit of work on this I could move them down I could scale them yeah just thinking okay so I want these uh, the bottom of this to move down a little bit so let's do that uh, la, la, la. so if I select these pieces and control and L and shift and H get into the front view so I can select easy turn on x-ray mode and I'll drag box over that and then G and Z I'll move those down a bit and then all H that's a bit better lovely okay so uh, now we've done that let's come out of x-ray mode and out of edit mode uh, we do need to UV it so sorry about that uh, I just noticed in between that I'd missed that little bit so we'll do the UV next and I'll talk to you then okay so let's see you the top so we'll do a shift H or <laughs> shift H come on ah I've got too much selected that's my problem shift H there we go uh, so let's see V this and there's a couple of things here that I'm gonna do uh, first of all we're gonna add some materials in and let me go backwards ever so slightly go up to my modifiers and if you've still got that mirror modifier on this one just apply that uh, la, 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 la. where's my edit mode there we go so this one this one this one and this one I all want to be on a different material so we'll go to there we'll create a new material and we'll call it sign there we go uh, we'll give it a different color just to make sure and then let's just click assign again there we go so now we've got those in uh, and we've got the light up here so we'll select that one uh, with an alt click to select the loop and this one will be the light and we'll give that a different color as well go blue for this one and assign there we go so 
Uh, these are going to be ever so easy to unwrap, so I'll just select them and we'll go to UV uh, editing. Press A in this uh, in the UV and then unwrap. Uh, you'll see that you know these obviously uh, aren't all in the right place so we'll just make sure with a pack that they all go in the same direction and because this is going to be text you might want to rotate it round so it's R and then if you press shift it should or no it's control it should snap and then you can repack <laughs> sorry <laughs> brain uh, we can repack uh, but turn off the rotate down here there we go that's better okay so let's uh, hide those ones because we've done them and now we can start to unwrap everything else so for this bottom piece I'm going to select those there and I'm going to leave that as a seam down the bottom uh, so if we select A from here UV seams from islands and then unwrap go okay. done that bit so I'll hide it uh, I appear to have a duplicate under there let me just make sure I've got no cleaning issues here let me just hit A and uh, under or back in the modeling room go to mesh and clean up and merge by distance and yeah that's picked up a few okay well that will make life easier when I uh, actually come to properly UVing it because it's going to UV correctly thankfully uh, so let's go back to the UV editing area so this bit needs unwrapping again because it's kind of that clean up got rid of it uh, so I'm going to press A over here I'm going to seam from islands and right click and unwrap and then hide it there we go that's better now these I'm going to cut so let's do that <coughs> uh, la, 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 la. so edge mode I'm firstly going to cut in this direction to get the top and then I'll right click and mark as seam and then press whoops I'll just select this island so I'll select one piece on it and then control L it's only going up to the seam it's clever enough to know that there's a seam there now and it can use it so that's perfect uh, so we'll hit A over here right click and unwrap and then I'm going to do these edges so for these edges um, I need to hide this top one to make selection easier so H and now we'll select each of these corners oops press full stop to get me back into a sensible view there we go and right click and mark as seen and then I need to just select these bottom pieces here so I'll go into x-ray mode and select over and then A in the UV and then UV and unwrap or just right click and unwrap now I've done that to make my life slightly easier so I'm just going to press uh, alt H to unhide those and then I just want this seam here so this seam I don't want at all I only put it there so that I could select these corners easier and not select the top so let's go to edge mode and alt click on that seam and then right click and clear seam and now I just want to select this bottom bit so select a polygon control L and right click and unwrap now it's not looking quite as I want it to 
and that's I think because my seam on the bottom isn't going all the way around so let me pop that in there we go no that's wrong oh, I'm in x-ray mode all right that's why it's having trouble so I'll select that end and mark that as a seam I'll select this end and mark that as a seam and then that one and that one mark out a seam there we go so to select a polygon control L to select everything press A over this side and unwrap and now that's perfect now the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I want the flow of my material to go around this edge I don't want there to be a seam there so I'm kind of sacrificing my directional ideas you which I would normally do uh, with minimizing the seams okay so let's uh, select the rest of that so control L it's going to seem at the moment I want it to be normal and then I'm going to hide it there we go so now we're at the top bit and I think I'll uh, stop this bit here uh, because this is going to be a really long section if I don't um, so yes I'll talk to you again in the next bit okay so we just have the top now uh, so let's get in here and start adding some seams so I'm gonna cut off basically each step so if I use uh, alt and uh, click and then shift alt click for the other ones I'm going to slip off all of those there we go including the bottom and then I'm going to snip off um, this face here and of course I'll have to do this one here and here and I think one last one around here there we go so right click and mark seams now I've got all those reds in there um, but it's not quite finished yet well it's nowhere near finished yet so I need to add in these pieces so cut these corners of each of these frame pieces I think there might be a polygon hidden behind there I can get rid of at some point in time there we go is that it? one more right click and mark a seam there we go so oh I've missed one there we go let's pop that back in again mark seam there we go oh and this one as well right click mark seam okay so that's sort of most of the cuts uh, but we're also going to need some vertical cuts to separate these out so at each of these corners we'll add a oops come on there we go we'll add a cut in there and mark that uh, these ones yeah we can do the same because it's just a single line if I needed to select more than a single line I'd probably hide some geometry uh, but in this case it is just a single line there we go and right click and mark seam right so uh, now this top piece uh, we need a seam around the top and bottom bits there we go I need to cut these I think perhaps front and back uh, 
and one on the back of the light itself. Okay, so <coughs> that's my first estimate. <laughs> I've probably missed something. In fact, I've definitely missed something. I've missed each of the corners here. Actually, I can put one. No. One at opposite corners on each of those. So, mark seam. Mark seam. Oop. Mark seam. And hopefully one last one. Mark seam. Right, so if we press A and then A again on the UV view, right click and unwrap, that's what we get. Now, some of these are a little bit wobbly, uh, which is not ideal. Uh, so down here, I'm going to change it from angle base to conformal, and that should sort that out. Now, directional wise, uh, I think perhaps these ones need to come around a bit. So let's go, let's minimize that for a sec. Seems to be okay. Well, let's pack it. Uh, UV and pack islands. Oh, I need to select it first, don't I? Foolish man. Uh, UV and pack islands. And this time I need to put orientation back on, and now it's put them all in the right kind of direction. Perfect. Right, so let's uh, unhide. Whoops, I keep pressing the U key because I'm in the wrong program. There we go. Now this bottom piece I think distorted a little bit. So let me just re-unwrap this bit. There we go. I'm going to select everything with the A key and then repack again. So UV and pack. Okay, so that's the uh, top and the bottom, uh, which is quite a bit, quite a bit of space really. Uh, but I want to select each of my materials and have these sort of packed and overlapping. So let me select my sign and pack these. So UV and pack islands. Uh, let's turn rotate off. That's not really happening. Uh, so we'll just press the R key and control to constrain, rotate it 90 degrees and pack those again. <coughs> so because this is going to be text, I want to have a, you know, a big space to put it in. So, you know, having those separated is good. So let's hide those. Uh, I also want the light on a separate one. So I'll select the light. Uh, the light actually doesn't appear to have unwrapped properly. It's possible that I need to add an additional cut in here. Ah, I didn't cut underneath. So let's add a cut there. So mark as seam. Oh, no, I didn't add one there either. Whoops, alt. Mark as seam. There we go. Just need to re unwrap that. So if I select just the light, I can unwrap that. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I don't care which way this is going, but you can rotate it if you want. Just going to depend upon you know what sort of gradient I put on it when I texture. Uh, so let's hide that. Uh, this bit. And this bit, I think, need un re unwrapping. So I'm going to select a polygon on both and then um, control and plus on the numpad just to see what they look like. Actually, they don't look too bad. There's a cut there which I wasn't expecting. So let's unwrap. Where is that cut? Oh, it's there. I've accidentally put uh, a seam where I didn't want it. So let's take that one out. There we 
there we go back to poly mode I'll just select a point on each and control plus on the numpad and unwrap there we go so now I can select uh, everything on the box Oops. and right click and pack again so it's uh, average island scale first and then UV and pack islands let it rotate if it needs to and there we are okay so there's a bit of a trick to this I know UV is going on on and on and on and on and on uh, but I want to show you a couple of tricks whereby we can make a bit more of this map than we've got because we've got these big kind of square spaces in here that aren't you know really doing us any good uh, and we could be using that for uh, something else so we'll do that in the next bit okay so I want to free up space on this to you know get a bigger texture so for that I need to cut this a bit smarter now first of all up here I want to disable uh, disable this sticky vertices because if I have it enabled uh, to say uh, shared vertices and I start to select a polygon you'll see that it kind of ghost selects outside of it and I don't want it to do that at all I want to be able to select an edge and you know have that work so first off I want to cut these pieces up and we can do that in the UVs now so if I alt click on those lines there shift alt click there and then have a look on the other side do the same we go we can go to UV and mark seam and now we've marked those as seams and we'll do the same for these top bits so alt click and shift alt click there and the same here oops Oh, come on there we go and oops not right click uh, UV and mark seam now if I select everything I can unwrap and we can then go to UV and repack uh, there we go and now we have less wasted space um, you know there is some still some wasted space but because we've done that we've you know made each island a little bit bigger and in, in this particular case it's not necessarily done all that much for me except to say that you know I have got a little bit extra out of it for other models you might get even more but for this one I haven't got quite so much now the other slight issue I have are these in here now these I believe are these polygons here now those are never going to be seen by anybody they're too small and you know they're just taking up UV space so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale them out a little bit and then delete them and now I can do the same thing for that so if I press A I've now got um, this section here I haven't re UV'd it so it hasn't uh, updated so I can now do the same thing so if I uh, alt click there shift alt click there there and there and then UV and mark scene press A to select everything and then right click and unwrap and now I've got even less wasted space so you know the models you create the you know hidden polygons the you know the way you unwrap can really affect 
how much texture space you get you know um, there was a lot of wasted texture space on this and now uh, you know there is less so so it's easier to you know do it as we did it uh, but you know um, if you really want to get maximum space out of it then you know do it the other way so the other thing is this top bit now I'm happy for this top bit to stay as it is because this little curve over here I don't want there to be any seams there I don't want to have to deal with you know textures cutting off and you know not working so I'm happy for that to stay as it is but for the other ones you know I think though it was reasonable to do what we did okay so there we go that's the UV so I'm going to uh, go back to uh, object mode and then Alt H to unhide everything and we're just going to have a look around and see what uh, I think the only thing I'm really missing is a little sign uh, on one panel and a door handle so uh, yeah we'll have a crack at those uh, in the next one so I'll talk to you then okay so let's select um, this panel here and press shift and H to hide everything else and go into edit mode so we press tab I'm going to select this polygon and duplicate it so shift and D and then right click to drop it where it uh, started and then S to scale that down a bit okay so uh, let's extrude that along its normals and for some reason my extrude has decided it's not going to work and that might just be a, a session uh, issue let's try uh, just pressing the E key instead there we go and we'll pull that out a little bit okay now I want to make sure that's not got a back on it uh, so I'm just going to press Control plus a couple of times and then shift H and then delete the back because it's not worth it nobody's going to see it so why have it there so I'm going to slit the front polygon and then change to uh, edge mode and control B click in and give it a small bevel there we go that should be enough so this I'm going to put on my signs um, material so let's select everything actually I'll put it on the size material in a minute when I've merged my pieces together so that I don't uh, yeah I don't over duplicate things so I just want to UV this essentially uh, so let's pop into the UV editing room and basically what I want is each of these corner pieces be selected now because I've only got a very simple bevel on these I should be able to if I go into x-ray mode just middle um, sorry left mouse drag box over each corner and that will select everything and then right click and mark whoops not as sharp mark as seam then a a and right click and unwrap there we go we have a sign okay so that's uh, fairly easy let's alt h to unhide everything tab to object mode and then alt h to unhide everything again so that's put a little sign there which you might you know change the dimensions of uh, but i want a little handle here somewhere um so the handle i'm guessing is not going to be here it kind of looks like it would be there um, but actually it's not because this is much 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 taller than your average door um, you know a person's head is going to come to somewhere about sort of midway through there if they're tall or below you know if they're shorter so it's going to be somewhere down here let's actually get into our um, normal view I'm going to 
we'll select the door and hide it it doesn't actually give us a position that's a shame um, I, I was hoping it would give us a position to work off but uh, yeah we'll see so let's uh, unhide that so I'm going to pick this panel here to work off go back to the modeling room I'm just going to put a simple handle on this for the minute so into edit mode tab I'm going to select a polygon in there, there we go and again I'm going to shift D and drop it in place and then press S to scale it down to roughly handle size and then shift H to hide everything else now I want to flatten the top on the bottom of this so I'll select that top uh, vert edge there uh, press S and Z and just flatten it down and when you click just type in 0 to the, to the Z uh, parameter and we'll do the same on the bottom so S and Z sorry I'll right click there instead of uh, <laughs> S and Z and left click and then just type 0 into the Z parameter there we go so we could give this a little bit of shape so I'm gonna cut it a little bit so let's cut across and across and across there we go and if I select the top whoops come out of that first slip the top oh come on what's going on there we go I'll slip the top and the bottom and scale those on X to bring them in a little bit I've lost a couple of me cuts but I'm not too worried about it now I'll select those and push them back so now on the extend so edge I've got a menu away where is it where's it gone oh it's just extrude isn't it it's not edge extrude ah of course <laughs> the E is uh, the way to go so E and backwards uh, so it'll be E and Y to constrain now I'll select these top edges and we'll go to uh, edge and bevel and click in and just dial that up until it's nice and kind of soft let's give it an extra level there there we go okay so all we need to do now is uh, give this some thickness so if I select a polygon control plus plus and we need to use extrude again uh, but now I want extrude along normal because this isn't working I have to do that down here uh, so normal global uh, let's try one of these different options it's probably not going to ever do what I want it to do uh, so I might have to cheat because the normals aren't pointing the way I want them to be pointing which is terrific okay so since that has flattened the top and the bottom uh, I can do a simple job here by pressing S and Z and just lifting that up a bit just to give it that little bit of separation and then for these end pieces I can flatten those with S and Y and click and just type 0 into Y and then we'll move them so G and Y and we'll push them back a little bit there we go uh, this middle edge I want to uh, soften up so we'll bevel that uh, so control B click in dial it up oops not too far 
just to give it a little bit of you know smoothness uh, right so let's delete these back uh, faces or rear uh, polygons let's delete those faces and now we should be able to soften up the handle uh, in terms of its edges so select the front two with alt click and shift alt click and then we'll do the same for the back two and now we'll control B for a bevel we'll just make that a little softer that's uh, probably too many iterations or too many segments I'll take it down to two and then we'll unwrap it so unwrapping should be relatively straightforward I want to clear all the seams first because I've got some residual ones uh, so just control plus to select everything right click and oops I need to be in edge mode right click and clear seam and now I want to cut front to back just the verticals there and mark those as seams okay let's pop into the UV room select everything select everything in the UV and unwrap and pack so it's UV and uh, pack islands there we go okay so let's unhide the rest of those polygons uh, we need to kind of join all these together and then do kind of a final repack for our um, UVs because they're all kind of messed up at the minute uh, they're unwrapped okay but they're not arranged okay okay so uh, I will talk to you in the next section okay so let's uh, join these together so I'll go into object mode and I want to select each of my pieces here each of my uh, models and then in the modeling room I'm going to object and join there we go now we've got one uh, model and we can see what's going on uh, so let's have a look in the materials so I've got a few materials uh, box frame let's select box and see what happens so I'll go into edit mode and select all of the box and doesn't appear to be anything I <laughs> just pressed a sign that's why foolish man uh, select okay so that's all that lot uh, the windows are hopefully going to be the windows frame let's select that that's the window frame lovely just making sure I've got everything kind of in the right sort of place oh, I've got some hidden stuff up there uh, so let's press U to unhide not you it's all H <laughs> oh dear sorry I keep pressing it I've been using modo so I'm my fingers and brain are in modo mode um, so all H to unhide everything seems to be in the right kind of place uh, but I will have overlapping uh, UVs here so let's go and select the box and press A to select everything over here and right click not right click let's go and pack them there we go so now we have all of our uh, pieces for the texture for the box you could separate them if you wanted to but I think I'm okay with this as it is uh, so let's deselect, uh, let's select the windows, uh, they need packing, so UV and pack. If you select them first John, there we go, UV and pack. That's a lot of windows, One, three, six, 12 aside, hmm, let me select that again. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that being right. 
Uh, okay, so let's try the frame. Select so we can pack that. UV. Whoops. Select them first. UV and pack. That's another modo mode thing that I'm doing. Um, if you have nothing selected in modo, it's the same as having everything selected in modo. So I'm just transitioning. Sorry about that. Uh, so it's deselect and the signs. Now I want to put this on the signs. So we'll select that and control plus and put that on the signs UV and then select and we'll pack that so UV and pack now this is a bit smaller than the rest of them so I'm just going to select everything again and do a UV and seams from island not seams from islands come on John brain is not working today or yesterday apparently as you will have noticed uh, average island scale there we go and then UV and pack and they'll be of a similar kind of size then uh, UV wise and finally the light which I think is okay okay so that's that and yes model done uh, you might want to adjust it a bit uh, exaggerate some bits you know I perhaps made the light a little small I'm not sure um, but yeah pretty happy we've made a TARDIS it's been a bit torturous I apologize for that um, but you know we covered some concepts that are useful in terms of you know making the most of UV space you know beveling as a whole instead of individually and uh, yeah I hope you uh, picked up something from it at least and uh, I hope to talk to you again in another video uh, if I haven't completely ruined my reputation of <laughs> competence okay so i will talk to you in another set